Okay. So you might get a message that this is- I get, so yes. Yeah. You, you can just say, okay. Mm-hmm. And, um, okay. <laughs> Let's hope this one works, okay? I don't know if we're going live. I don't know. Yes, I can hey. see we're going live. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> Woo yeah, this has been a big okay. job here. Okay. <laughs> so good. Well, I think we're working. I'm, I turned off the repetition on the other one. Okay, this is was this take four, take five? I don't know. I don't know. Take many. <laughs> Take many. Okay, so it's going to be a shorter version. We'll do a short, yeah. like half an hour. Friday, we're all tired. How is everyone? Um, one of my challenges right now, and, and when we start speaking, I'll try to find it if I can see people in the comments and quiet myself. But, anyways, thank you everyone for being so patient with us. And hopefully, if the Facebook, uh, this, I'm doing it through Zoom, if that works better, that we'll get through our technology problems from here on in. So welcome to the Friday wind down and the weekly wind down. We're talking today about letting go. And uh, today we thought what we'll do is talk a little bit about why is letting go important and what are kind of some of the elements of letting go. I don't know, Sharon, do you want to start? Do you want me to start? How do you want to? Sure. Oh, well, I could start just talking maybe about what is letting go and yeah, why is it so important. And I can look at the comments and stuff like that. So that okay, awesome. So letting go, who big subject, <laughs> very okay. important subject. So letting go is being non attached to outcomes. Mm -hmm. Well, how many times do we, including myself, try to control? all the outcomes that we want, <laughs> right? Yeah. So what is it to be not attached? Because so many times we're told, okay, asked, what do you want? And let's create it, let us, let's put it out there in the world, right? What we want and ask for it and pray for it. And, and but a very important piece to all of that of magnetizing what you want is the letting go piece. And the letting go piece is being non-attached to the outcome, right? And so we think we know as human beings what outcome we want, what's the best for us. But what if there was some greater divine source that actually had a, you know, um, a better inkling into what is for our best for our highest self. Maybe not what feels the best, but best for our highest self, growth and evolution. So non-attachment and accepting the present moment as it is. Mm -hmm. Letting go of what we think the present moment should be. Mm -hmm. The person that we're here living with today should be. The situation, how it unfolded, should be. And how's about accepting what is? That's a part of piece of letting go as well, accepting what's so. Were you going to say something? Yeah, I think it's really important to say why. Why do we want to do this? Yeah, I'm going to get there in a minute. First, I just wanted to distinguish. So, and surrendering up our desires, because we have desires and surrendering them up is another letting go. And opening up, letting go is also opening to guidance of the higher power. And letting go is forgiving. And letting go is relinquishing our ego self or the image that we want to put out to the world. So these are just different ideas of letting go. And why is letting go so important? So you want to speak about that? Yeah, so um, I, I like that because there's different components to it. Mm -hmm. And it, if you look at any one of those, it, there's, um, there's really good reason. So if letting go of um, uh, anger, you know, I'm really mad at somebody or a situation. What happens a lot of time is people will say, well, if... I let go, then I'm basically condoning them and 
for what they've done and saying it's okay. And so the, the why of letting go is not to say what they did is okay and kind of let them off the hook. It's for you, I think you mentioned this, it is like to have that peace within because by holding things in, we continue to relive it and re-traumatize ourselves over and over and over. And then we get stuck, we get stuck in a mindset and it's almost like a scar it keeps happening more and more and more. Whether it's anger or a feeling of guilt or a feeling of sadness or something I should have done, I could have done better, um, you know, um, the letting go of, as you were saying before, the what kind of letting go, letting go of this expectation that I was meant to live a lifetime with my husband and retire with him and walk out into the sunset. That was what I, I you know, I was cheated by life, holding on to that belief. And how many people do that, especially with grief or with a job? This is what was meant for me. And I, and because I don't have it, I keep trying to work at it. I get angry that it didn't have, I get resentful. So the why is what happens when we can let that go and allow the universe to provide us different ways of being, as you were saying, that the universe has a much greater intelligence. Our soul, what we're here to learn and do, knows that from a higher perspective, what's possible. Mm -hmm. So those are a couple of the whys. It's like that letting letting go allows for more possibilities Sorry. that could come. It allows us to heal, right? Heal, to heal anger, to heal grief, to heal guilt and shame. It allows us to get unstuck when we're just spiraling in this constant holding on, gripping on to something. Those are some of the whys that I saw. I don't know if you have other thoughts mm -hmm. on something. Awesome. Wonderful. And, and if we don't let go, or if we hold on, it's against our very nature. So it creates tension. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and creates high cortisol and adrenaline stress hormones, and then that could create disease in the body. So another reason why letting go is of utmost importance, right? Yeah, exactly. I wonder if we could talk a little bit more about that part, the stress, the holding on to something and what it does to the, the physical body. Mm -hmm. Can you elaborate a little bit more on that? Or do you have an example of somebody mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Never, or maybe yeah, yeah. Me, whoever, <laughs> that because uh, I think that's something that's so important to people and they don't recognize the impact of them holding on to something is having that actually on their physical body. Yes. And um, I was, when I was younger, I really resented my dad. Mm -hmm. And um, that really took a toll on me, holding that anger in my heart, right? And it was never, he was never the right father. <laughs> and, and that really took a toll on my whole digestive system. Also, mm -hmm. something in my life I had a hard time digesting and stomaching, and uh, I had resentment, and and it was really horrible. And then I went and um, did a transformational course. Within that course, I realized that my possible my window was so small, and that a lot um, and. Could I open it a little? I think also letting go doesn't have to be a whole, I let go of, you know, it was just, just a little. Can I let go of just a little and allow for more possibility? Like maybe all the stories that I told myself about him weren't true or that I heard about him from other people. So a little bit, I called him. I hadn't spoken to him in five years and I checked out some stories. And that little window opened of a possibility. And I, I felt like this, whoo, something release in my body when the possibility opened that I never could have realized before it opened. I didn't realize how much energy it took to harbor all that anger mm -hmm. in my being, in my body. Yeah. 
and That's releasing it was extraordinary. And of course, I'm grateful now because the last 20, 25 years, I've had a dad. And, and then, but part of that was grieving the dad I always wanted and thought I should have had and it coming into, a, into acceptance about the dad, acceptance and appreciation about the dad that I did have. Mm -hmm. And I could only see that in the opening to another possibility and realizing that a lot of what I thought was so were stories that I heard from other people and made up in my mind, a lot of it. And, you know, um, in that example, some people could say to themselves that, yeah, but what he did was wrong. This was wrong. This was wrong. And yes. it's not negating that. You're not, neg you're not taking no. off the hook, so to speak. I'm not. It's a, maybe you can talk a little bit about the forgiveness and the boundaries, the important Beautiful. boundaries that were Beautiful. set up as a result. Yes. So the forgiveness was for me and my brother. My brother was a big motivation because I felt like he really needed a dad. And so um, the boundaries are very important. Yes, because there were some things that were not okay that he did. Mm -hmm. But I had shared with him over time that I was willing to have him in my life, but there were certain things, places that I will not go with him and I will not allow. And I think one of my most empowering moments in my life, probably as a human being, as a woman, was to as, tell him that if you kept talking that way he will have to leave my house it was my first house when I first got married and he didn't believe me and I escorted him out the door and that and I was shaking as I did it it was not easy but I and I closed the door and I went wow and that was the beginning then I knew that I could have a real relationship with him because I could say yes but I could also say no mm -hmm. Right. And, and it was going to be at my, how would you say that? You know, on my terms. Yeah. Going to yeah. be on my terms. And he only understood that. He didn't understood it, understand it when I told him, but he yeah. understood it when I took an action by escorting yeah. him out the door. Yeah. And, and it's such a great example because it's where people get stuck. They'll say, in an example like yours, well, um, you know, I don't want this to happen again, whatever the bad things that he did and wasn't a good father in certain areas, it's going to just keep happening. And yes. so I, I, I'll just, you know, the other side of it, which and sometimes you have to do, I'm not, I'm going to let go of that relationship. But what you're talking about is letting go of the hurt and the pain that you experienced and providing an opening to see if there still was a possibility in a relationship that was different on your terms, as you were saying. And if he was willing to play there, he was. Some people won't. And yes, so then but I took the things. chance. And you it was a scary chance, chance because I yeah. wasn't sure how it would end up. You don't know, right? You're taking a chance. You could, you know, and you could feel like you're going to get wrapped back into the old ways. But it's that, you know, the having the boundaries to say, I can forgive you. I love you. I'm going to put that behind us, but it's not going to happen again. We're not going to go down this road yes. again. And but you, you brought up, a, oh, sorry. Go ahead. You brought up a great point at the beginning because you said some people let go of their relationships. Yeah. And yeah. I thought I did because I didn't mm -hmm. see him for five years. Yeah. But you know what? So I thought I let go of my dad and it's okay that I don't have a dad and it's okay that I didn't see him, but you know what? I really didn't let go because inside of me was still that heaviness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, you know, that's what happens. Eh? We can, this is the multi layeredness of everything that we're talking about when we talk personal development and spirituality, because, and, and just keeping on this layer of your, your example, because you didn't see him. So that was an important boundary for you because you needed to heal. You needed to get to where you were. So all of these approaches are not wrong or right. They're what you need, right? So as somebody's, you know, possibly listening to this is experiencing that with their family member, or close person saying, okay, I need 
to get some some space from this person it may not be forever maybe you know at that time you thought probably it will be forever but through your healing who would have known you were able to be able to let go of some of that and then come back to the possibility of the relationship and then as you said there's another layer of not only maybe that it wasn't the way you wanted it and things that happened but letting go of the relation the thoughts you had around what was you deserved which was true there's nothing wrong with you deserved you know this type of father you didn't have it but letting go of that is this is who i have and and you know for my growth for your you know yes. growth and evolution yes. you have that father you had that whatever who we're talking about you have that relationship in your life and yes. so there's so many layers of the letting go letting go of the thought about the relationship the letting go of what happened and the forgiveness the letting go of it has to work out i'm going to put a boundaries and if i walk him out the door he may never come back yeah it's all that's taking resistance and the the struggle and the striving out of the equation it's <laughs> yes and be willing to go to a place that you don't know mm -hmm. Because a lot of people, we don't, let, a lot of times we don't let go because it's, okay, it's not great, but at least it's safe. And I know this, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But yeah. I don't know if I escort him out the door, if I'll ever see him again. Oh. And that's the part of allowing and letting go, saying, I'm okay with that. Like, I have to get to that point where I'm going to be okay if he doesn't come back or whatever might happen because that allowing allows for greater, like it's, it's an energetic thing. You know, you can't hold on to, it has to be this way. It actually pushes the possibility away. Yes. Yes. Beautifully said. Yes. Yeah. I had um, another different example, but it's around kind of, you know, letting go of our, um, self perceptions or perceptions of self and, you know, kind of obligations. And um, I was talking to a client who uh, is going through grief, a very kind of similar to what I went through and so has similar kind of experiences. And similar to me was the person in the family that was always like the savior, did all the stuff and, you know, who always the one to come to the rescue kind of thing. And so she's in deep grief and she's worrying about this person and that person and all, the, you know, and I'm like, can you just really right now is your time to really focus? But that's not who I am. She says, I'm the one that helps. I said, but can you let go of that? And no, but I'll feel grief, uh, guilt. I said, can you let go of the guilt? She goes, well, I think there's a nobler, more noble um, sentiment, which is to help another. And I said, well, what if the most noble sentiment is that you heal yourself from your grief, you be your greatest light in the world. And from that perspective, then you can help other people. And also to recognize everyone else is on their own path. And she kind of went, oh, so in that kind of ch shifting, her mindset started to let go. Ah, beautiful. So different so different level of, yeah, different type of, of letting go. Yes. And so I love what you said there. And it's so, so why, so it's, so, why is it so hard for us, you know, for the letting go? It is so strong generationally, what mm -hmm. we learn, isn't it? And culturally. Absolutely. And it's in our cells, it's in, we embody it. It's in our thoughts and our beliefs and our judgments. Like it, it has such a hold on us. So I think it's really important for, to observe our thoughts. Mm -hmm. That's the start to look at where am I holding on so tight? Where am I having a hard time letting go? You know, what was programmed into me when I was a little girl, a little boy? Right? What are the what are these desires and needs that are so important to me? Mm -hmm. And and I think so, and what you're saying is like starting from presence, 
you know, quieting a little bit the mind. So we can recognize those strong emotions that come up for us that helps us indicate that there's, it's time to let go. You know, the feelings of guilt, shame, fear, the lower levels of consciousness, feeling stuck and boxed in, feeling apathetic. Those are all kind of calling to us. And we, then we start to feel it in our body, like you were saying, the stress, fear. And it's like, okay, so this is calling me to be present to what's happening. And can I be present to it? And can I look at it with curiosity and compassion? And that's the hardest thing for people to do, right? To be compassionate with myself that I'm feeling this way. I should know better. I'm more spiritual. I've taken all these courses I, I'm this way. I'm, that, I'm a coach. I'm a teacher of this. I should be better. And it's like, can we just be, oh, okay, here's this anger coming up or this guilt or shame. And I know shame. I've done t- you know talks on shame. I should know better. Can I just see it and go, wow, this is interesting, man. Here's it's coming up again. Can I be kind to myself and, and notice that and say, is what is that telling me? What is it teaching me? What is it I need to do with it? And is it time to let it go? Or is mm. it time to just kind of play around with it more and share it with a friend and explore it and you know that type of thing before we completely say okay you know what I'm kind of done with this shame feeling or this idea that I need to in my example to be the savior for me what I had to do is my mother died a few years later and I was the executor and I was like I cannot do this I just can't so I have to let go of the the responsibility and in doing that I had to let go of the concept of me that was the one who did everything and was such a good girl, right? To let go of that. And, you know, and then all the feelings that come up as a result of that, can I be okay with it? Can I sit with it? What does it trigger in me when I'm, when I'm not that and other people are, 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 are taking the role. Yes. I feel guilty. Okay. So here's, okay, Leanne, this is interesting. There's guilt coming up again. How can you deal with it? Can you just like push it down and say, I shouldn't be feeling guilty. It's their turn. Or could I be like, oh, this is interesting. Where's this guilt coming from? And why am I still feeling it? And where does this come from? And am I, can I allow this to, to, to let go of the guilt and allow others to take this on now? Hmm. Beautiful. So you're distinguishing out the ego patterns. Hmm right? As the image that you've created for yourself. Yeah. Which includes all the attachments to it. Yes. Exactly. Right. And so it's recognizing that it's an image. It's something that it's a story that you've created. The stories we tell ourselves. I think we need a whole other a whole other one on stories we tell ourselves but yes next week right. next week yeah. the story i love that the stories yeah. we tell each other right so so yeah so this the first step is to observe to step away from our thoughts and observe we're the only creatures that could do that that could watch mm-hmm. ourselves that we know of right <laughs> that we know of, that we know of on this earth plane <laughs> for now <laughs> which is enough and plenty maybe the dolphins i don't know whales they seem a little smarter than us but <laughs> maybe totally and then yeah so that's the number one is observe our thoughts and patterns and the images we create and stories we create for ourselves and number two distinguish the ego our ego self that we've created from the actual situation what is the actual situation here Mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. and yeah. um number three i'm thinking is maybe Im- to embrace that uncertainty mm-hmm. you know in that time you were you know you weren't certain it's uncomfortable it's not what you did before want to push you know, it away want to yeah. push it away exactly yeah. that's kind of what i when i'm talking about embracing it to me that's the way that I do embracing is being curious and compassionate. Sometimes maybe people can do it another way, but it's like, um, you know, I was talking to my son yesterday and he was talking about going from one state to another. So a state from um, not feeling motivated, just feeling very, and not in a negative way, very at peace, calm, you know, not having a lot to do, just being and, and so forth, to then having like 
a lot of drive and passion and trying to move forward. And he said, like, I feel like I'm one or the other. Like, I will, I'm trying to find this balance and I'm getting to the point and the passion. It's great and exciting, but then it gets me doing things and it gets me working out and everything. But then, you know, I'm feeling like I'm on a run and a routine and, you know, he's going through all this. I said, like, can you just watch yourself and be okay with it all? You know, and can you, instead of the, we had this long conversation about wholeness versus balance that in the wholeness, you're one state and you're another state and you're in two states and you're all of that. And just to be observing yourself and mm -hmm. like, you know, how you're talking about embracing it. So, you know, it's kind of like, maybe he was a little bit kind of push that part of him away, maybe harder to just say, yes, that's who I am, but maybe more like, okay, that, you know, in a, in a light way, hey, that's who I am. This is what I'm experiencing now, this duality. And I'm trying to find balance in the duality and I'm having mm. a hard time with it. Oh, this is interesting. I've never experienced this before. So mm. that's a way for, uh, that I think about kind of mm -hmm. embracing, embracing that. And, and you talked about, it sounded to me like being versus doing. There's yeah. some being versus yeah. doing in there. So, so what opened up to me a number of, year, of years ago is, um, so I used to be in sales way before I became a naturopath 27 years ago, right? So I would knock on a million doors and do cold calls. And I had a team of guys I was managing to do cold calls. And we worked hard and we made lots of calls and we worked hard. And then all of a sudden it dawned on me many years ago that maybe we don't have to work so hard. So maybe the doing comes from inspiration which is a whole other kind of doing. It's not from your head. It's not like, oh yeah, I've knocked on a million doors to get 25 sales to get, you know, that breakdown. So maybe the doing or the going to the gym, maybe we do from a place of being inspired. And if we're not inspired, we don't do. So you won't get a lot done if you're just lying on the couch every day, exactly. right? But if we're open, to something greater than ourselves, to inspiration that comes in through our crown chakra, right? And we say, I'm an opening, show me the way. I surrender and show me the way I'm an opening, right? And then take an action from that. That's a whole, it, it, it's so much easier. I realized my work is easier in that way. I get messages. Oh yeah, call this person. And then this pe person sends me, gives me 10 other referrals instead of me making the hundred calls as an example. Absolutely. And that's really the essence of letting go, of letting go of the need to make it happen and make it happen the way we expect it to yes. happen. And letting go of the fear of it not working or the consequences of it not working, like those, all those feelings are tightening rather than expansion, right? right? It's like, okay, this is what I'm inspired. I don't know if it's going to happen or not. Let me just see and what's my next step forward, you know? And uh, we yes. had an example of this with uh, one of our clients where there was this payment that went to another Leanne Bridges. And I was freaking out and bought money. I was like, oh my God, are we ever going to see the money again? And you were just like, okay, well, let's just send it out there and trust. And I just kept, you know, my, my mind and, and my fear, I could feel it in my body. Like it was really intense. And I kept just trying to come back to it. And it was a really work. I just kept coming back to it and sending it love. And then kind of the, the same thing was, okay, I have to be okay with it not working. If it doesn't work, I can't just say, send it out there and, and hope, trust so that I can make it work. <laughs> Cause that's the same kind of putting the resistance in the field. Right. Yes. Truly, I had to get to a point where it's truly saying if that end, the other Leanne <laughs> went off to somewhere, Jamaica with it, I had to be okay with it and had to really, truly surrender and let go. And then all of a sudden, and then inspired and you gave you had the big and you were calm you're like open your heart send a letter to this other leanne <laughs> and I was like i don't even know if it's a scam leanne or real leanne but let's just do it let's open our heart and i sent a little email and within about two hours she refunded our client the money <laughs> and that was like 
that was the real practice of letting go in the moment but it was it was a visceral feeling i had to keep practicing and keep practicing work with you the client was very calm about it and uh and just that constant letting go letting go there's not it's out of my control i can do this one thing i can send it out to the universe but this is it beautiful that's so beautiful because what happened just before that why i was just so it it's all was um I, I was visiting my dad and it was a whole rigmarole to get to my dad in the states anyway um that was another lesson in be in your head and do what you need to do but stay in your heart right mm -hmm. and so i was talking to my dad's girlfriend i was I said, do you have any neighbors? My dad's really ill and, and struggling and she takes care of him. It's way too much. But I said, do you have any neighbors who can help in a pinch? And she said, no, it, I really don't. And that left me feeling not very good because I, you know, I, it takes me a while to get to my dad's. Yeah. And so I said, you know, I'm going to go take a walk because I was feeling off and, and not feeling good about it. And I took a walk and I sent it and I, just said, okay, I surrender this up. I don't know how it looks. I don't know, but it just doesn't feel well that they have no support and they live in the middle of five acres in the country and a country road by themselves. Anyway, I took a walk and within 20 minutes, I would say of me doing this little letting go ritual, there was a man in his mailbox and I went up to him and I said, hi. And I knew I had met him before. And I said, hi, I'm, I'm, you know, Bernie's daughter. And he goes, Oh, hi, I remember you from a long time ago. And I told him, I said, you know, and we talked about, he says, I, how's your dad? I said, not well, he's at end of life. And he said, Oh, my mother just went through that. And he said, if you need a lady to go and help them, I'll give you a number. And if you need me to step in and go in an emergency and take care of your dad or help Marilyn, or whatever they need, I'm willing to do it. And I had tears running down my face and he wrapped his arms around me and he held me tight. And he said, don't worry about it. I'm here for you guys. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it was like, whoa, okay. Mm -hmm. Thank Amazing, you. Right? Thank you. Such a, so such for me, near magic, go, right? what's that? When we, when we do it that way, it's really magical. Matt, and for me, letting go is gratitude. It's mm -hmm. just when, you know, when I allow and I just send it up and out and just go, I, this one is too big, too much, too hard for me. So I mm -hmm. surrender it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, one other thought maybe be, before we get off, I do have to get off at four, but um, is that sometimes things are really, really, really hard for us to let go. They're like, they're very painful. Like, you know, you talked about earlier about the forgiveness of your father and imagine there's a lot of pain there and that you just kind of touched on, you know, working in the, the forum and, and, uh, and how that helped you is that when, when we are in presence and we are curious and things come up, sometimes we can let it go, but sometimes it shows us where our work is, our yes. true work. And, um, and so that's where the healing, the shifting of perspectives, the feeling of it, the, the feeling through it. Um, maybe we can just talk a, a moment about that part of it, the work, the healing, that sometimes we just can't let yeah. go of deep-seated guilt that's been there for a long time or, or fear or yes. whatever. And that's kind of like a practice going, okay, that's it there again. What can I do for myself to help me with this? this pain, this trauma, you know? And so I don't know if you have any comments about that. <laughs> the, the love, the self-care, the, the understanding. Self -care. Come, come. Yes, okay. and surround yourself with people that you trust mm -hmm. in the moments when you're so vulnerable, really, that people that you feel won't judge you. So those mm -hmm. people, self-care, I find my self-care and you have a very strong self-care daily practice. Mm -hmm. We both do. Yeah. And I find that helps me to stay grounded in the midst yeah. uh, when the wind blows very, very strong is to have that 
to, you know, to eat healthy and to exercise regularly, to have our everyday meditation, um, you know. Maybe uh, somebody else helping too, whether a friend somebody or, else helping, or something. Yeah. Asking, asking for help when we yeah. need it. Yeah, exactly. Especially right. somebody that can guide you through, because sometimes you get in your head and you can't really get out of it. So it could be somebody close to you um, that you can be vulnerable, but maybe somebody professional too that yes. can guide you through some of that. And you talk about my one of my daily practices that really helps me is like journaling, is when I'm struggling with that and trying to heal it. It's like bringing it out and, and, and asking my guides and whether, whatever it is, just, you know, why is this happening? Why, where am I not healed? What do I need to do? And trying to get that inspiration. So it's not from a, uh, it's from, okay, let's be quiet. Let's listen to that whisper. Sometimes I need divining cards. I need different, different tools, mm -hmm. you know, talking to you and different, different ways. It's taking it from different angles. Okay. I've all, I've got a piece of it today. Tomorrow I'll get another piece and another piece yes. and maybe a year from now, another piece. And Oh, here it comes up again, you know, but it, it's, it, it shows us where our work is. And when I mean the work, it's where we need the healing and yeah. not to be afraid of that, to really yes. get it head on. And, and could we just love the wounds? Mm -hmm. you know and 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 I just love my dad because you, he just you know I wouldn't be the strong woman I am today without exactly. that experience yeah really he taught me how to love myself by like you said creating boundaries and saying if you want to be in my life I love you I'd love you in my life but not at the expense of my soul, of my, you know, of being wounded anymore. No. Mm -hmm. no. And then, like you said before, which was so great, taking the space when you need it to heal. Sometimes mm -hmm. you can have those people in your life to heal yeah. when you need yeah. space to heal and to breathe. But I also send love and gratitude to all the people in my life that were challenging. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. I learned so much about myself through mm -hmm. that. Yeah, and that's it. To, have, hmm? to keep that open heart and keep sending them love not with the expectation they'll necessarily come back some people may have left you you may have left others but i think that's part of that letting go is just constantly sending them love and gratitude for whatever they had and as that maybe the resentment the anger comes up as part of the healing is to just keep doing that keep that doing hopeful, that love, right yeah. and whatever we send out comes back to you tenfold right exactly exactly so be loving and compassionate with yourself mm -hmm. really 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 important awesome awesome so i'm going to uh, stop this live because i think i forgot that this zoom is actually i gave to somebody else <laughs> I've been coming on our Facebook Live and freaking out. So uh, thanks, everyone, for uh, staying tuned and to all of our our technology foibles. I think we have a, a, an answer now. This will be good. Excellent. And thank you, Sharon, for joining in and bringing your wisdom and all the fun. And you have a great weekend. Yeah. Thank you. you want to stay on? I'll, uh, thank you, great partner. <laughs> okay. Bye. Bye.